Cherubs, this is Grand Central Station in New York City. And if you're being a stickler about it, it's Grand Central Terminal, because this is not a place that you pass through on your way to somewhere else. This is where the tracks terminate. This is where you arrive. In the past, great cities like Rome or Constantinople had walls with magnificent gates to celebrate the arrival of visitors. Or Milan. We have gates too. But human communities evolved, and with that evolution, the practicality of, and the need for, a giant wall that keeps people out just diminished. Technology made walls obsolete, both in the ability of others to bring them down, and in modes of transportation that can circumvent them altogether. So the great city of New York will mark your arrival, not with a gate, not with a wall, but with this temple to human connectivity and commerce. Grand Central. I mean, I guess there's also that other important way that New York will mark your arrival if you happen to come by boat, but let's focus on Grand Central today. The practical purpose of Grand Central Terminal, to be less romantic about it, is to serve as a central railway station to New York City, which, given the nature of New York as a commercial center, is it's pretty important. And New York has had that identity for a while, and the structure here today was not the first railway depot at this location. In the late 1800s, Colonel Vanderbilt financed a great central depot here. The exterior of that structure was made to look like the Louvre in Paris, a classical veneer to decorate the rumblings of industrialization. So if you intended to leave New York City through this temple, you entered that classically palatial building, and the flow of humanity would drive you toward the rumbling steam engines coming from the platforms. The experience would have been something like traveling through time, moving from a classical facade into an expression of irrepressible and compelling modernity. You enter through the past and continue toward the future. But the original depot could not survive the increasing number of trains and passengers arriving at the turn of the century. It had to be rebuilt and redesigned. But the modern iteration, I think, maintains that experience. This monumental temple invites you to participate in the speed and power of train travel. Commuters from all over arrive and depart from here daily, and those taking longer trips from outside of the city arrive at the same temple as those commuting daily from their nearby homes. And this led the head engineer of the current structure, William Wilgus, to devise a plan for commuter trains to leave from an underground station, while those on their way to somewhere farther off leave from the ground level. It's pretty clever. It makes it so that those with bags traveling far away do not need to use the stairs, and it keeps the two populations from interfering with the travel of the other. No daily commuter wants to deal with a tourist who has luggage. Wilkes also designed a way for the tracks to loop around so that incoming trains could have their passengers disembark before allowing new passengers to board. Again, keeping both populations from interfering with the travel of the other. Like, think of all the other terminals that you may have encountered. They have their trains lined up with arriving passengers maneuvering their clunky bags through departing passengers with their clunky bags. Not a Grand Central. Because a large part of the terminal had been moved underground, the old steam engine model just wouldn't work here anymore. The smoke would be too much. And the steam engine was a clumsy model for commuter traffic from the start. They accelerate slowly, and commuter trains have to stop and start often, as we all know. The solution is an electric engine, which requires the engineers to innovate on a number of different areas, including the creation of a wooden shoe over the third rail to protect workers from the dangerous current powering the engines. So the architecture of this building and a decision to move part of it underground encouraged new innovations just like the city does. This combination of artistic design and engineering genius, which animates many tons of steel, leads me to the impressive statue that sits on top of Grand Central Terminal. It's called the Glory of Commerce. It features Mercury, the god of commerce or travel, known for being the messenger who facilitates the connectivity between the gods, is flanked by two figures, Hercules and Minerva. Truly an inspired choice. So the paradigm of mortal strength, Hercules, symbolizing the power of the railway, the construction workers, and the raw force of industrialization is placed on one side, and on the other, the paradigm of intellectual strength, Minerva, symbolizing the innovative genius of its engineers, electricians, and architects. The god of commerce is held up by mortal and intellectual strength just perfect. It's this statue that highlights for me the importance of this building. 
It forces me to think about a daily commute, a routine travel that brings somebody from home, a tiny universe in itself with complex characters and interests, to the workplace, a distinct universe with diverse but equally complex characters and interests. The architecture highlights that this commute, which you may experience every day and may perceive as mundane, is a spiritual act, connecting yourself and your universes to the selves and universes of others. This act of travel connects cities, and this building stands as a temple to our mortal and intellectual drive for that connectivity. So yeah, I think it's a pretty cool building, and if you like this video, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.